I want you to decide that you're going to make a decision and accept the reality that you determine the quality that you live. You're not a victim. Trust me, you're not a victim. You can tell me your victim story and I'll take it apart nine ways from Sunday. You are not a victim. You create your own reality. That's Life Law 7. You create your own reality. You teach people how to treat you. Now, those are just givens, and you have to make those part of your mantra. You create your own reality, and you teach people how to treat you. How do you create your own reality? I said the world is reciprocal. There is reciprocity. You get what you give. If you put out negativism, you get back negativism. You put out positive, you get back positive. And I want you to make a decision right now that you are responsible for the quality you live. You know you better than anybody else, and I want you to do something for me right now. Don't close your eyes and do this, because you might be driving your car right now. But I want you to think back to the happiest time in your life. Now, I don't know how old you are listening to this, but I'm assuming you're an adult, 20 plus, maybe you're 30 or 40. If you're 45, you've lived 16,425 days. And out of those 16,425 days, I want you to think back to the happiest time in your life. Was it when you were a kid? Were you eight or nine or 10? Was it when you went to college? Was it when you got that first apartment on your own, that first job? Was it the first time you fell in love? Was it the first time that you really felt like you were independent? Was it the first time that you felt like you really belonged somewhere? That you were accepted by some group of people? What was the happiest time in your life? I want you to think back to that time. If you need to hit the stop button for a minute to think about that, do it. Because I want you to have the happiest time in your life. And I'm going to ask you specific questions about it. So it can't just be, yeah, when I was younger. No happiest time in your life. Okay, you got that in your mind. If you hit pause for a while, that's okay. If you got that in your mind, when was it? Specifically, when was it? And what about it made it the happiest time in your life? What was going on? You were younger, but did you feel acceptance? Did you feel powerful? Did you feel success? confidence. The number one need in all people is acceptance. So I'm guessing at that time, you felt accepted. You felt like you belonged. But what else about it? See yourself at that time. What did you look like? What did you wear? Was this a time that you were wearing shorts and flip-flops and t-shirts and going to college? Or Did you feel good because you were putting on nice clothes and going to work? Had you just purchased your first new car? What was the happiest time in your life? And you've got to be able to describe why that was the happiest time. What about it? Why that time instead of some other time? Okay, now that you've identified that time and assuming that it's not right now, then the next question is, Why did it end? If the happiest time in your life was a time before now, what changed? Did you lose something? Did the world change? Did you change? Did somebody do something to you? Did you just get used to it where it lost its buzz or its sizzle? Something happened. I mean, based on results. Based on reality, there was a happiest time in your life, and it had a beginning and an end. It was a phase. Maybe it lasted a month. Maybe it lasted a year. Maybe it lasted two years. But what was the happiest time in your life? And it's not now, which means it ended. What changed? What about you changed? What was taken away? What was lost? What is now different? And what would you have to do to get back to that happiest time in your life. Because let me assure you, 
of a very powerful reality. It wasn't about the time. It was about you. It was about what you perceived about that time. See, we don't respond to the reality of the world. We respond to what we say about the reality of the world. Maybe you were 20 and you were into music and you had free expression and you were able to throw off all the boundaries and guidelines and just fully express yourself completely. And you felt good about that and you had success with that. So you felt like, wow, I'm really actualized here. I'm not fighting for survival. I'm not worried about security. I'm not going through those motions. I'm Instead, actualize to the point that I'm into self-expression. Okay, what happened? What changed that? And I can tell you that what changed was you changed. What about you changed? And it's not necessarily a negative. I mean, maybe you decided to take on something new. But you have to decide, that was my choice. I decided to go a different path, and you have to decide when you choose to pursue something, and you're pursuing it in a very singular way where it's your dream, your purpose, your journey, you have to decide, hey, if I'm going to be alone, I'm not a bad person to do it with. And you can only say that if you're really in a good relationship with yourself. If you really know things about yourself where you say, hey, I'm good with me. I'm happy. If I need to be really working alone here right now or whatever, I like me okay. And if I don't, what goes on my to-do list? So the relationship with you has to be right. So ask yourself, when was the happiest time in my life and what happened? Why is it not still that way? And then ask yourself, if you're in an ongoing relationship, When was the happiest time in your relationship? Let's say it's your spouse we're talking about. When was the happiest time in that relationship? And what about it made it the happiest time? Was it when you were falling in love? Was it before you had children? Was it when you didn't have a lot of responsibilities and bills and challenges? What was it? What made that the happiest time in your relationship? And what about your relationship changed that you're no longer in that phase? Because with the exception of a very short list of realities, there's very little in a relationship you can't fix. 